let's add some custom items to Minecraft. All right, we're finding back in Intelligia once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding some custom items to Minecraft 119 with a fabric. So how is this going to work? Well, it actually isn't that complicated, all things considered. And let's just jump right into it. So in our tutorial mod package, we're going to right click a new package called item. And then inside of there, we're going to right click a new Java class called mod items. Now this window will appear if you have added a GitHub repository to your project and you can simply say add and that's going to be fine. Every time you add a new class or a new file, then this is going to appear. You can also just check the bottom left corner there and then it should also work as well. So how can we add an item? Well, first of all, we need two new methods for this and that's going to be a public static void called register mod items. And this will simply say tutorial mod dot logger dot debug. And then it's just going to say registering mod items for tutorial mod dot mod ID because I usually don't like to keep this method empty. Then we're gonna go into our tutorial mod class and in the on initialize, we're just going to say mod items start register mod items. So that this particular method there is called and then we can proceed to the other method. The other method is gonna be a private static and it's going to return an item. You can see it already suggests to us the net Minecraft item and that is correct. I'm going to auto complete this with the tab key and then I'm gonna call this the register item method over here with a string parameter called name and an item parameter called item. This is going to return registry and this is very important. We have to choose net Minecraft util registry. Do not choose Java RMI registry, net Minecraft util registry. You click on this and then you press the tab key to autocomplete and you can double check that the import here is correct. Then you're going to call the register method registry.item, comma, a new identifier, tutorial mod and mod ID, then passing in the name, and then after the first parentheses, passing in an item, and then ending it all with a semicolon. And now we can register our custom items over here. Let's just start with the first one. This is going to be a public static final. And you can see I only type in the first few characters and then autocomplete it always with a tab. Now this is going to be an item again, and this is going to be called, let's start with raw tanzanite over here. So this is the actual item that we'll add. And then we will call it the register item method over here. And then we need to pass in a string. So we're going to start with the quotation marks. This name here, this generates automatically. You do not have to type this out. That is just the name of the parameter that we're currently passing in. And this is, of course, going to be raw underscore tanzanite. Now, what's important about the name here is that this naming convention follows the same naming convention that your mod ID follows, meaning that you can only have lowercase characters, underscores, dashes, and numbers, no uppercase characters right now in this particular name over here. So keep that in mind. And then the second parameter is going to be a new item, which needs some new item settings. Now we'll choose the fabric item settings over here. So we'll auto complete it with those. And then the item settings in this case, this is a builder pattern. So you can call different methods on it and you can keep calling them. So you can call multiple methods. For our purposes, we just want to assign a group over here. So we're gonna double click on the group and we're just going to say, this is gonna be an item group dot miscellaneous, let's say. So once again, I click on it and autocomplete with tab and then just end the line with a semicolon. We're gonna see after we've actually seen the item inside of the game, how to add a custom item group as well. That's gonna be shown in just a moment. Right, but this isn't everything. We need some more things and that is going to be, well, what about the texture? What about that exactly? And also what about the name? We don't want this to be called raw underscore tanzanite in the game. Absolutely, you are correct. And for this, we need to go to the assets folder because now here we need to create our folder structure, which is very important. So please pay attention to this. It is important that you get this absolutely right. So in the assets folder, you're going to right click new directory and this is going to be called tutorial mod or whatever your mod ID might be. This has to be completely correct, otherwise it will not work. Now in your tutorial mod folder, you're going to right click again directory and make a block states folder written exactly like this. Once again in the tutorial mod folder, you're going to right click new directory called lang l-a-n-g and then once again in the tutorial mod folder, right click new directory called models. And then last time in the tutorial mod folder, right click new directory. And this is going to be the textures directory. So you can see, make sure that those four folders are all contained in the tutorial mod folder. And the tutorial mod folder is contained in the assets folder. And the assets folder is contained in the resources folder. 
Then we're gonna proceed inside of the models folder. We want to right click new directory called block. And then also in the models folder, right click new directory called item. Very important that this is block and item singular and not plural. Same inside of the textures folder, right click new directory called item and right click new directory called block. So this is the full folder structure that you need. Please make sure that this is done correctly and then you should be fine. And now we need to add some JSON files. So let's start at the very top, block states. Luckily, we don't need any block states as this is an item. Block states are important for blocks, which we're gonna see in the next tutorial. The lang folder, however, is going to contain the translation file. So we're gonna right click here, new file, and we're gonna make a file called en underscore us dot json. Make sure this is written correctly with the dot json file ending as well. And nothing crazy over here, en underscore us dot json. And we're just gonna hit enter. We're gonna add it to Git and then we can actually add something to it as well. So the en underscore US JSON file, we're just going to type a curly bracket. The closing curly bracket will generate automatically. We're just gonna then hit enter. We want to translate the raw tanzanite item. So how do we do this? Well, we're just going to type the quotation marks. Once again, the second quotation mark will generate automatically. I'm gonna say item dot tutorial mod dot raw underscore tanzanite and then a colon after the closing quotation mark, another quotation mark, raw, tanzanite, and there you go. So how this is set up should be fairly self-explanatory. We're making a new item. This is our mod ID, and this is the name of the item given right here. So this should be fairly self-explanatory how this comes together in this case, and that is then how the actual item name will be displayed inside of the game. Well, we're not done just yet. We also need a item model. Well, next to the models, item folder, right click there, new file, and this is going to be called the raw underscore tanzanite.json. Once again, this is very important that the name here matches exactly the name given right here, otherwise it will not work. So the file name here has to match exactly. The contents of this are a bit more complicated, but I will type this out and then I will explain. So we have a parent colon item slash generated, comma textures, colon open curly bracket, layer zero, colon tutorial mod, colon item slash raw underscore tanzanite. There you go. And now what is this craziness? Well, first of all, we have a parent here and that is the item generated. This simply means how basically the item should look like it's just going to be a normal item, let's just say. Please also make sure that this is written correctly. It's not items, it is not items with an uppercase I, it is item slash generated. Please make sure this is exactly correct. Now under the textures right here, we have a layer zero that we're defining. Basically, we're just defining the texture of this particular item. And this is going to be under the tutorial mod namespace. So this is our mod ID again, and then colon item raw tanzanite. What does this mean? Well, this means that it's going to look for a texture inside of the item folder, right? So textures, textures, item, item, and then it's going to look for a PNG called raw underscore tanzanite. Let's just add this PNG as well. So I'm just going to copy this over. This, including all of the code and all of the JSON files, will be available to you in the description below for download in the GitHub repository, an individual gist as well. And now our item is complete. For the sake of argument, let's add another item because some people sometimes have been confused. What do I need? Do I need a new mod items class? Of course not. It's called mod items, not mod item, of course, right? But whatever the case may be, let's just add a second item. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this item over here, press control D to duplicate the lines that were selected. And I'm just going to call this tanzanite. So this is going to be tanzanite. And then we have both raw tanzanite and normal tanzanite. We still need a translation for this. So in the en underscore US JSON file, I'm just going to do the same thing right here, press control D, and then we just need to add a comma over here because they are separated by commas. And then this is going to be tanzanite. And then this is not going to be raw tanzanite, but the translated name is also going to be tanzanite. For the item models, there's a very neat trick. What you can do is you can just drag the JSON file into the same folder while, while holding control, and then it will duplicate the file. And then you can just rename it to tanzanite over here. And then of course here as well, renaming it to tanzanite. So now it's going to look for a texture instead of the textures folder, instead of the item folder that is called tanzanite.png. 
So we're just going to copy this over as well. This is, of course, also available for download. And there we go. That's how easy it can be to add a second item to Minecraft as well. Now, let's just jump into the game and see if it works. And then we'll also add a custom item group after that as well. But first, let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves in Minecraft. So let's just take a look in the miscellaneous tab at the very bottom. And there we go. Some raw tanzanite and some normal tanzanite. So exactly how you would expect it to be added. It is added and everything working great. Right now, let's take a look at the custom item group as well. This is actually fairly straightforward, all things considered. So in our item package, we're going to right click new Java class called the mod item group. And then instead of there, we're just going to make a new item group. So it's going to be a public static final item group from right here of we're just going to call it tanzanite. And this is equal to a new fabric item group builder over here dot build. We're just going to pass in a new identifier tutorial mod dot mod id comma and we're going to call this let's just format this a little bit differently something like this we're going to call this tan the night after the first closing parentheses comma and then a supplier of a new item stack and then passing in mod items dot tan the night ending everything with a semicolon and there we go now, what is this crazy item stack over here? Well, this just determines the actual item that is displayed for this particular item group. So that's pretty much all that there is to it. If you want a second one, right, you can have a... So what you can do then is you can just once again duplicate all of this and then you can have a... And then you can have a second one, right, Tanzanite 2, Tanzanite 2, that's fine as well. But in our case, we don't need this. We're going to be fine with one. And now in the mod items, instead of passing in the item group here, we want to say mod item group dot Tanzanite. And then we're going to do the same thing right here, mod item group dot tanzanite. There you go. We can now remove the import over here. Right. Let's also add the translation for the tab. Now this is actually going to be fairly straightforward. It is item group dot tutorial mod dot tanzanite colon. And then of course, once again, we're just going to call this the tanzanite tutorial tab. So TTT, that's great. Now what you will notice is that the item group over here actually has an uppercase G. I'm honestly not sure why that is the case. It is the only thing I believe that has an uppercase character in the entire Ian underscore use JSON file. So who knows, but whatever the case may be, this is what we need. And now let's go into the game and see if it works. All right, we found ourselves back in Minecraft again. And let's just see. So this is a very good sign. We already have the arrows over here to get to the second page. And there it is, the Tanzanite tutorial tab exactly how you would expect it to. We have the raw tanzanite in there and the normal tanzanite as well. And that's how easy it is to add a custom item and a custom item group to Minecraft. And that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So yeah.